question. The Shad Goswami asked to come, why is it said that the Goswamis deliver people from the devouring mouth of liberation? Answer is the relevant translation, Kaivalya Nistar Kau. So Kaivalya is liberation. And although liberation is considered to be the uh, highest aspiration for the jnanis, for the devotees, liberation is not at all desirable because at least in the material world there is the opportunity to serve Krishna. And liberation takes away that opportunity to serve Krishna because there is no sense of uh, personality and there is no sense of master and servant or lord and, uh, lord and devotee over there. And that's why there are many places. The Bhagavatam itself says, Diyamanam Nagrananti Manamat Sevanam Jaya. Kapil Dev says that my devotees will not accept liberation if it is without service to me. And Prabhupadanan Saraswati is a famous well known Acharya. He says that Kaivalya Narakayate. Kaivalya is like Naraka, like hell. So just like a, like a person if is going to want to help and desire deliverance from hell. So similarly, the aspiration is made Kaivalya Nistaraka. So, a devouring mouth. So the word mouth is not there literally in the translation, but nispara means to actually rescue. So something which is a great danger, for that it, one is rescued. So the, here the employed metaphor over here is that, that just as there can be material temptations which take a seeker away, so there is a spiritual temptation and limpers the liberation from what called the last snare of maya. So people who may otherwise get attracted to impersonal liberation, what the Goswami is doing is Govinda Gana Amritai. By singing the songs about Govinda and by living the songs as a legacy, they have written Anand, Jiva Goswami has written Gopal Champu and Vrihad Bhagavata Amrita has been written by Sanatana Goswami. And they like this, the Goswami has written many books, the Vaishnava Toshri is written by the Goswamis. Uh, by this, they have given beautiful pastimes of Krishna. And when those pastimes of Krishna be here, even if we have some attraction to impersonalism, that attraction goes away and we become attracted to Krishna. So here, impersonalism is, is implicitly compared to some sort of a monster, which is a big mouth. But people foolishly uh, get attracted to it and go into that mouth thinking that that is the lead to freedom from suffering. So, uh, now the rescue from this mouth is done by the force of attraction. So by revealing a higher attraction, just as Shukadeva Goswami was attracted to the impersonal Brahman, but when Krishna Katha he heard, then he gave up impersonal realization, Atma Rama Shimon, Nirgantha Purukrami, the famous verse which describes that. From impersonal liberation to personal realization he came. So similarly, the Goswami is carrying on that legacy and they save people from the a devouring mouth of liberation by pouring out. Now how are they pouring out? By themselves singing and then through their books reciting their song, uh, recording their songs over there. So they are pouring out the nectar. And this nectar, when people are attracted to the, to the mouth of the monster of liberation, and they see this nectar, then this nectar attracts them. And then they are rescued from the mouth and they attain pure love for Krishna. So that is the metaphor over there. Thank you. Hare Krishna.